Some cameras have a mechanical shutter mode and some have an electronic shutter mode. But then there's a few that have a third one called electronic first curtain. What's that all about? I'm going to tell you on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey there, everyone. Welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions on Adorama TV. If you've got a question, you know what to do. You just got to askdavidbergman.com and submit that form on the site. I just might pick yours to answer here on a future show. Also, you might know that I'm back on the road this year with Luke Combs as his tour photographer, and I'm once again offering my Shoot from the Pit live concert photography workshops. You spend the day all day with me backstage where I'm going to teach you everything I can about covering concerts, sports, and action of any kind. Then you get to put that knowledge to work that night by photographing a real live concert. We're going to be at stadiums. Yes, big giant football stadiums all around the U.S. and Canada, and I'm only taking 10 photographers per show. So go to shootfromthepit.com right now. Well, not right now. After you watch this video and grab your spot, sign up for the email list on that site, and you'll be the first to know about future workshops. I just might be offering some in Europe, New Zealand, and Australia later this year, so stay tuned for that. Hope to see you out on the road. Okay, with all of that out of the way, let's get right to today's question. This was sent in by Trevor R., and he wants to know, what the heck is electronic first curtain shutter and why would I use it over the mechanical or regular electronic shutter? Thanks, Trevor. That's a great question. Now let's talk about shutter modes. For the longest time, film SLR cameras and then later digital DSLR cameras only had one type of shutter mechanism. There was a thin metal curtain that covered the film or the digital sensor so it wasn't exposed to light until you went ahead and took a picture. And when you push down on the button, that curtain moved out of the way, exposing the film or the sensor for as long as you set your shutter speed. It could be a thousandth of a second, or it could be one full second or whatever. And then at the end of that time, a second shutter curtain slid up into place to once again cover that film or the sensor. That's how a mechanical shutter works. It's a mechanism that physically moves to create your shutter speed, essentially. Now, today we actually have newer mirrorless cameras. The mirror is a separate issue I can talk about another time, but by eliminating that mirror along with some other technological advances, we can now look at a viewfinder that's showing us a live image through the lens of the light hitting the sensor in real time. That's how we're looking at our photograph before we take it. But to do that, you can't have a mechanical shutter curtain blocking the sensor. It needs to be open all the time because we're looking at whatever it's seeing even before and after taking a picture. So those cameras offer an electronic shutter. Now there's some electronic wizardry that captures the light for the amount of time you set that shutter speed, but without having to block the light that's coming through the lens. That's how it works. Now many cameras actually have both options, mechanical and electronic, and you can choose which one you want to use. It's really as simple as selecting a menu option to switch back and forth whenever you want. Now, why would you choose one or the other? Well, there are some pros and cons of each. They vary a bit depending on what camera you're using, but I'm going to use the Canon R3 as my example because that's my primary camera these days. First, let's talk about the traditional mechanical shutter. Now, this is going to work pretty much like any SLR you may have had before. It's familiar. It gives you the entire range of shutter speeds that the camera offers, usually from a thousandth of a second to 30 seconds or longer if you use the bulb setting. Flash works just as you'd expect with a max sync speed of two hundredths of a second on the R3. And Canon has these shutters moving incredibly fast now. You can shoot up to 12 frames per second in mechanical. Now, one downside of the mechanical shutter on a mirrorless camera is that there's a bit more shutter lag. That's how long it takes to start the exposure after you press the button. And this is super important for sports or action photographers because you might miss the moment if it takes just a little bit too long to take that picture. It's still incredibly fast, but it's a bit slower because remember, the shutter has to stay open so you can see the viewfinder before you take your picture. When you push the button, that shutter curtain has to close first, then open right away again to expose the sensor. Then the second curtain comes in and ends the exposure, and the whole thing opens back up again so you can see through your viewfinder. You can still get 12 frames per second with all that happening, which is actually insane. Um, now, the electronic shutter, as with most new technology, can help in a lot of ways over the mechanical shutter. The coolest thing is you, that you can shoot totally silent. There are no moving parts whatsoever. There's no mechanism to move out of the way. 
Back in the day when I worked for Sports Illustrated, I shot a lot of golf. You could never take pictures on a golfer's backswing before they made contact with the ball because the shutter sound was considered a distraction to the golfers. We can argue about that separately, but that's just how it is when you're covering professional golf. Now you can shoot silently anytime without bothering anybody. This is great for photojournalists in a courtroom or street photographers or really anyone who wants to be inconspicuous. Also, no moving parts means there's even shorter shutter lag. You don't need to wait for that first curtain to close and then open again to start the exposure. And there's also no shutter shock. That's the slight vibration that happens when the first curtain moves out of the way. If you're working on a tripod and need everything to be perfectly still for the sharpest possible photos, electronic shutter means there's no movement at all, and that's going to help you out quite a bit. There are a few other benefits as well. Um, on the R3, you can shoot up to 64 thousandth of a second. The mechanical shutter only goes to 8 thousand. To be honest, I've never really needed to shoot that fast, but cool that it's an option. Also, while the mechanical, mechanical shutter can give you up to 12 frames per second, electronic gives you 30. That's crazy fast. And when you're shooting, there's also no blackout whatsoever. So you're able to see your subjects the whole time instead of having a quick blink happen between each frame when the shutter curtain closes. Uh, the downsides of using electronic shutter, well, there of course there are always trade-offs, right? Currently, we don't have any cameras that have what's called a global shutter, so the light is read off the sensor one line at a time. This is called rolling shutter, and it means that sometimes straight lines actually get slanted. If you're in a moving car and taking pictures of, let's say, telephone poles flying past, you're going to see it. They're not going to be straight. Now, sensors get faster with every new camera, and it's barely noticeable on the R3, but it is still there. Also, banding becomes a real issue with, with flickering lights. Many types of lights actually pulse or flicker. We don't see it because our eyes and our brain do an amazing job to compensate, but cameras aren't as good as humans yet, so you might see streaks of light under certain conditions. A few other things to note. While you can shoot up to 64 thousandths of a second, your shutter speed is limited at the other end. You currently can't shoot electronic sh shutter slower than a half a second. Also, many electronic shutters just don't work with flash at all. This is a technological limitation that's beginning to change. The R3 is actually the first Canon camera that works with flash in electronic shutter mode. So I imagine that won't be an issue for too long with a bunch of other cameras as well. Um, so those are really the main differences between mechanical and electronic shutter modes. But Trevor asked about the third mode. Yes, some of the newest cameras actually have another option. Canon calls it electronic first curtain, and it's a hybrid between the two modes that tries to take the best of each. The beginning of the exposure works like the electronic shutter. Nothing has to come in to cover the sensor first. It just starts the exposure immediately on the sensor. But then the second curtain covers the sensor at the end of the exposure. They could actually call it either electronic first curtain or mechanical second curtain because it's actually both of those. So what are the benefits of this? Well, like electronic, there's very little shutter lag. You also get a little bit faster flash sync at 250th of a second on the R5 as opposed to 180 in electronic and 200 in mechanical. You get the full normal shutter speed range and there's no shutter shock. Any vibration would be caused by the second shutter curtain, so it wouldn't be until after the exposure and wouldn't affect your picture. You get the same maximum 12 frames per second as the mechanical shutter, and flash works just fine, even on cameras where it doesn't work in electronic just yet. And while you can't shoot totally silent, having only one shutter curtain moving means that it's quieter than shooting fully mechanical. One weird issue with electronic first curtain is that when shooting fast shutter speeds with very wide aperture lenses wide open, you do get some slight distortion of the background bokeh. You need to be shooting at like 1.4 or 1.2 and at a thousandth of a second or faster, and you really have to look closely to notice the difference. There are also some issues of slightly uneven exposures across the frame when shooting with those super fast shutter speeds. These are things that you might see in a lab, and I personally have never noticed in the real world, but it's something you should be aware of if that's the kind of things you shoot. Okay, so Trevor asked why you would use electronic first curtain. Well, like I said, it's pretty much the best of both worlds between mechanical and electronic. I'd recommend shooting that way all the time, except if you often shoot fast lenses wide open and fast shutter speeds, you might prefer to use mechanical to avoid that potential issue with the bouquet. Or if you want to shoot completely silent, then go ahead and use the electronic shutter. Otherwise, I don't really see any reason not to use electronic first curtain. 
What do you think? Did I miss any issues with any of the shutter modes? What do you use on your shoots? Let me know down in the comments below. While you're there, go ahead and like this video, subscribe and hit the bell icon. You probably know all of that helps me and the channel. So if you appreciate what we're doing here at Adorama TV, thanks for taking the time. Keep those questions coming and I'll be back here next time with a brand new one answer right here on Ask David Bergman.